Hey guys, what's going on? It's NASCAR Fan here, and we are back for episode 2 of uh, the GT Sport Livery Editor tutorial. And today we're just going to be doing a quick little uh, thing here. We're going to be basically showing you how to line up decals on a body panel. Uh, so there are a lot of livery designs that have part of the decal starting from, let's say, the nose that goes up to the hood, then down to the side, and on to the back in sort of a big continuous loop and that is something that you can do relatively easy in Gran Turismo but it's not as easy as you would want it um, the way that it works in Gran Turismo is that there are different layer or different planes for each thing so the hood has its own set of decals the front end kinda shares with the side but it can't you can't put something on the side of the car and have it all the way over the front especially not if you're trying to have it swoop up along the hood and then come back down so basically you're going to be editing on several different planes to try to do this I'm just going to basically show you how to really kind of easily line everything up the way you want to um, and how that works so first thing you're going to do is want to go to the body layer because you always want to start well, you don't have to but I always prefer to start with if I'm going to have something go from the front and lead its way out I prefer to start there so that it's easier to line things up one by one instead of doing the side and then the front and then trying to line the hood up. So it gives you a little bit of wiggle room essentially. We're using the Toyota 86 today. We're going to go ahead and start with the front bumper here. And then we're going to just choose a basic decal or shape. Nothing too fancy. Um, just for the sake of example. We're going to go ahead and use this shape here. Nice little tooth looking uh, shape. And we're just going to make a little stripe that goes up to the hood. Now you want to be careful, unless this is what you're trying to do, you want to be careful that if you want it to go on the hood that you don't have it hooked too far over so that it starts extending out of the hood. Unless you're trying to do that, that's not what we're trying to do in this example, but just keep an eye out for that because you can easily uh, kind of make a mistake there. It's not the end of the world if you do that, but it just makes it a little harder on you to, you know, kind of sort stuff out. I'm actually realizing this is not the one that I want. It's not really doing what I want it to do. I kind of want to have a curve to go up the side. So I think I'm just going to use one of these and scale it up a bit. This is one of the benefits of having such an uh, expansive area, only having this one little plane to work with, because you can really size something up uh, if you'd like to. Now this is similar to the BMW I designed that you guys might remember. So I'm just going to go ahead and put a stripe here. Then we're going to go ahead and duplicate on reverse so that it's even and that looks very nice. So we're going to go ahead and finish editing the layer. Then we're going to go change our our work area. We're going to go to the hood now. And then we're going to go ahead and add a layer. And this is a, one of the things about having a different layer for the hood that gives you some freedom. You can change what you want to do. Now I want to put in that little tooth perhaps. I'm not going to. I'm going to continue to use this until we get to the door. But if you wanted to, you could, you could use these now. And it allows you to kind of switch up what you're doing. Uh, which is really handy. So you see I'm realizing now that as I make this that I might have made a too too sharp of a curve. I'm going to use my off scale, my off, uh, off, uh, trying to think of the word of it, off proportion scale to try and flatten this out. Because you have all this room to work with on the hood. You can kind of flatten that out and then size it up to a bigger scale. You see how it's blinking. It shows you how big the actual object is. But since you're just working on the hood... Uh, you don't have to worry much about that. So what you're going to want to do now is kind of play around with the camera, get it to where you want it so that you know that you're lining up what you need to line up correctly. Looks pretty good. We're going to line up and then duplicate on reverse. That job is done for us. So now we have stripes that go up the side, and now you're wondering, what do we do to get them to pull down to the side? Well, now you're going to go back, get out of this work area. You're going to go back to the body work area, and then you're just going to go ahead and add a layer. I'm going to go on this side because I prefer that uh, that lighting. And we're going to go ahead and scroll down and find something that we want. Now I think is an appropriate time we could get away with using one of these teardrops or one of these slashes. We're going to see here. I think we're going to go ahead and use this one. And now I'm going to play around just slightly here. I'm going to place this and then I'm going to go ahead and flip vertically. And then horizontally as well. Whoops. <laughs> Give me a minute here. I 
the one downfall, there we go, that's what we want to know. The one downfall is that it does not flip, her, vor, excuse me, it does not flip vertically or horizontally from where it's placed. It's flipped uh, horizontally or vertically from where it originally started. So that can be a bit of an issue uh, if you're trying to flip things. I rarely end up flipping things. That was just an example of when I did flip something, and you can see clearly I have no idea what I'm doing. But, uh, um... But that's basically uh, just me playing around with something, trying to get it so it molds the way I want it to. So now it's basically the same thing that we did earlier, just on a different kind of angle. And it might be a little harder here. Might not have chose the best shape personally to use. Um, if I'm going to be completely honest with myself here. Probably should have chose a different shape. But I've been looking at that teardrop for a while and I kind of wanted to use it. So we're just going to go ahead and roll with it here and see if we can't make it work still. Basically just lining up, making sure that one end's not fatter than the other um, so that it lines up and everything's really flush. That doesn't look too bad. It's an issue you might run into is it might look like it's slanted a bit and you can kind of tell where you change directions. That might not be such a good idea, but right there I think looks pretty good. That leads down into the mirror and then we can take another example of using something from the mirror or some other obstruction to our advantage. So what we're going to do here is hit OK. Duplicate on reverse once again, and then we're done with that. So now you can see we have used different layers, different planes and angles, and we have made some nice little stripes up the side here, and now we can go ahead and go back in. Now we can choose, let's say, a pattern, um, and we can kind of tie this all together if we want. I didn't really think through what I'm going to make out of this. I just wanted to show you guys how you can line some stuff up. So right now I'm just going to take a shot in the dark and, uh, and see how that turns out. I think this is a, I think that's a better shape to use here. So once again, now we're going to be able to flip this uh, horizontally and it'll do what we want it to since we're starting, we're keeping it in the starting position. And we can just kind of line this up the way we want to. When you're doing this, kind of pay attention to make sure that you're keeping the thickness about the same or else it'll be pretty obvious that you're using different shapes. Um, and you also want to make sure that these little tails here are inside of what you were originally making, especially if it's, obviously it's got to be the same color, but you can kind of use that to, because when it's scaled up like this, it kind of looks a bit ugly, but that is basically the gist of it, and then we'll place that. Can't really tell. If you spent a whole lot of time on it, you wouldn't be able to tell. We'll duplicate on reverse. That looks a bit ugly right now since it's just sitting out in the open, so what we're going to do is to finish off this piece, we're just going to grab ourselves a little pillar, and then we're going to skew it <clears throat> you go ahead and cancel that editing I didn't mean to rotate it go back and get our pillar alright so now we're gonna scale it down here move the camera in and we're gonna skew so that it kinda lines up with what we're trying to do here downscale a little bit downscale a little bit I'm gonna have to actually skew it a lot more and just a little more skewing a little more scaling playing around with it here. We're about where we need to be. And there's a little tooth there. I don't want to spend too terribly long on it since it is just an example. And there's a little line there that we can kind of thin out. But we'll go ahead and bring that down. You can't really notice it from afar. And then there you go. So we basically put a big ring around this car and you can fill that in if you want using your teardrop tools or what have you. Um, I'm not going to do that for the sake of the tutorial. Um, that'll be another video where I can go uh, into filling things. But basically that is how you line stuff up with different work areas. We started with the front end of the body which you saw how we couldn't really put things on the side from that angle. Moved it up into the hood, took it onto the hood work area worked it back into the body on the side, and then kind of brought it in and tied it down. So, of course, obviously I would fill this in if I was making it a full livery, but it still looks pretty good as it is. It looks clean, everything's flush, and the most important thing is to make sure that your widths are consistent. Even if you see how they kind of get bigger and wider and then smaller, as long as you're smooth with how they are, it'll turn out okay. If you start putting jaggies in there, and they start popping back and forth, and it starts looking like it's a Minecraft level more than a car, Unless you're trying to go for a pixelated look, it really doesn't look, uh, 
it doesn't look natural. It doesn't look correct. You notice that a lot of liveries have a big flow to them. They all are smooth lines. Unless, of course, they're going purposely for pixelation or for blocky looks. Almost every design you're going to see is going to be smooth. And that's something that you want. So again, that is basically just how you line up things on the body panels and how you can kind of use uh, mirror mirrors, tires. I mean, that same thing that we did with the mirror there works for headlights as well. It's how you can use the car around you to help manipulate your livery into something easier for you. Work smarter, not harder uh, on that. And you can see as we pan around the car, it doesn't look half bad. So I do hope I helped you guys out. I hope you enjoyed. And that is basically how you line stuff up on the panels. Above all else, stay creative. I love seeing your guys' designs. And uh, if you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content. And I'll see you guys next time.